This video demonstrates how the point indicator standard is used to light LEDs showing point settings on a control panel. It is used for solenoid point motors such as Pico, Seep and Hornby where the switch has a momentary contact. This is a point indicator. It senses four switches which change the points. There is a pair of LEDs which corresponds to each switch. So when the point is set one way the green LED will be lit. When it's set the other way the red LED will be lit. If you wish you can use different colour LEDs. You could have them all yellow for example. The power for the point indicator is connected to these two terminals. In this case we're powering it from 24 volts DC. You could also power it from 16 volts AC or you can have a separate power supply for the point indicator and for the points. Solenoid point motors receive a momentary burst of power. We can use the power supply to demonstrate how the point indicator works when it gets, receives a pulse of power. It works by the positive pulses, it doesn't work from negative. I'll connect a wire from there and touch it on these terminals to demonstrate it. This green wire represents the pulses coming from the switches which work the point motors. If we touch it on the terminals that are connected to these switches, we change the LED showing that the point set in the other direction. The adjacent terminal switches it back again. So if we set the first point that way, the second point will set to green, then we'll set back to red. Set the next one to green, set the last one to red. Now I could demonstrate something else because the point indicator has a built in memory. So if you turn the power off to your model railway, next time you come along it will remember which way all the points were set. So we'll turn the power off, wait a couple of seconds for it to die away. Now pretend it's two days later, switch the power back on and it remembers green red green red. Here's a section of a model railway I'm building. There's three points on it, three switches which have a spring to return them to the centre and it's all wired in the conventional way. Now if the points were a long way away it would be impossible to see which way they're set and that's where the point indicator comes into play. Normally you'd fit the point indicator very close to the control panel because you've got wires running from the switches to these terminals and from wires running from the LEDs to where the LEDs are going to be located in these holes. But to make it easy to see what's happening, I'm going to wire it up on top of the baseboard. The point indicator is supplied with all the LEDs fitted to these terminals. And to make it easier to spot errors, it's best to just leave those in place and wire from the switches first and then see if the LEDs change when you change the switches. Once you've done that, you can wire them into the location on the control panel. The point motors have the negative wire going to the common from the 24 volt DC supply. And they've got two yellow wires to each end of the terminals. They come from the switches. The center terminal on the switches is connected to plus 24 volts DC. So this means that when you close the switch, you get the positive pulse along the yellow wire. As well as that yellow wire, there's another yellow wire which we're going to wire into the point indicator and that's going to give it its pulse 24 volts DC to change the LED. I've connected the yellow wires from the switches. This pair of wires from the first switch, this pair from this switch, this pair from this switch. Also connected to the same 24 volt DC power supply that powers the points. The point is set to send trains along this track. The green LED is lit if we throw the switch, the red LED is lit now. The point is now set to send trains along this track. Just to show the other LEDs changing with the switch. We are now ready to wire the LEDs into the locations in the control panel.
Let's explain how the wiring works with LEDs. LEDs light when the current flows from the long leg to the short leg. If the polarity is the other way round, they won't light. By connecting the two LEDs so that the long leg of one goes to the short leg of the other, the long leg of the other goes to the short leg of the green one, then when this is positive and this is naught, the red will light because it will flow along the long leg down the short leg, but it can't flow, the naught can't flow through the green LED. When this becomes plus and this becomes naught, then the green LED will light because that's got the long leg connected to the plus. Here are all the three sets of LEDs, all wired up. The long leg of the green to the short leg of the red, and the long leg of the red to the short leg of the green. The two wires from these connect to the appropriate two terminals on the point indicator board. I soldered the other set of LEDs together, but on the third set of LEDs, just to show that you don't need to be able to solder, I've used a terminal block which I've cut off the strip to hold the two LEDs. On the control panel, I've drilled 3mm diameter holes where the LEDs are going to go. I'm going to push them through from the back. There's a little lip to stop them going all the way through. Then I'm going to use a hot glue gun to glue them in position and make sure that the legs can't move and short out on something. All the LEDs glued in place. Now for a demonstration.